And we are live from Prasco Park for the Trinity Baseball Classic. Highly anticipated matchup between the Mason Comets and the Kings Knights. Our, Knights, our first baseball broadcast of the season, uh, Mother Nature. Uh, not uh, giving us the best weather these past few weeks. So we've had a few cancellations, but we're excited to be here on the mic uh, for this exciting park uh, game at, at a beautiful, beautiful Prasco Park. My name is Adam Little, joined alongside Isaac Vargo. And Isaac, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, like you said, one of the most exciting games of the year for both teams. Both teams have been very good so far. The Comets are 10-1. and one. That leads their conference in the GMC. And then the ECC, the Kings, they lead in their division as well. They're eight and two overall, four and one in that conference, so it should be a great game today. Yeah, and these two teams have a history of just playing some great baseball. Two years ago, game came down to the wire. Noah Samuel uh, threw that perfect game. It was an unbelievable effort by him. It was very low scoring, but Noah Samuel kind of carried the way, and it uh, should be a very exciting one tonight as it'll be Bryce Brannon, the Duke Blue Devil commit on the mound for the comps tonight and uh, just a plethora of college level talent on this Mason baseball team. Yeah, very talented team. 17 seniors on this Comet team. The most I've ever heard in a program. Um, yeah, led by Bryce Brand today. He's got to control his fastball. He's had a little bit of walking issues today, so if he can stay in the zone early, it'll be nice for the Comets. And up to bat for the Knights, it'll be Drew Burdine center fielder as Brandon's first pitch it is perfect right down the middle yeah right there just season control ahead in the count is what coach Kurt Bly loves to say stay ahead of the count Brandon puts a lot of zip on his fastball see stretchers in that one low and outside Brandon's pitched three games so far for the Comets ten innings total with 11 strikeouts it's two and one on the year so nice start Burdine takes another but that one a strike a little bit outside if you're a pitcher early in this game and if you're batters you want to examine what the umpires are calling early in this game because it's really big to know the umpire's zone yeah hug the outside corner there up one two in the count as he releases the off speed, no good. It drew Burndine batting 300 today in this year. Done a very good job getting on base, 471 for this night's lineup. Burndine gets a piece of that one and sends it back to the parking lot. Maybe that one hit the ice cream truck. Oh, yeah. Isaac. Yeah, early in this game, what's big for this Knights team is getting Bryce Brandon's pitch count up. You want to get to the comments, bullpen, it's a little less striking as their starting rotation. That pitch low. As Burdine staying in this count makes it full. Yeah, what an A-B here to start off for the Knights. Burdine hits a ground ball up the middle, fielded by Sulik, and he retires him for the first Comets out of the day. Yeah, Anthony Sulik so smooth out there at shortstop. He's not decided to play baseball at the next level, but, man, he's really got a talent over there at shortstop, so smooth. Yeah, your average shortstop, that probably would have been a ground ball up the middle, but Sulik takes care of it and retires the first night batter. It'll be Caden Clever, the left fielder, up to bat now. As Brandon sends that one, that ball hit deep into right field over the head of the Comets. As he gets the second, he'll hold up at third as Kings starting to get the bats moving. Yeah, that's what's going to happen early in the counts. It's going to be Bryce Brand looking for the fastball. And then all over it there, Clever over Casey Doner's head in right field. Yeah, that one just a little bit of hesitation from Doner off the bat, but... Very hard hit ball and a good, good double from the Knights. And the senior shortstop will take the box for Kings. Yes, Kings won this matchup last year. An upset would be said by many people. And early in this game, they're going to look to put as much pressure as the Comets 
as possible. Beautiful pitch there by Brandon. As he catches Baker looking on the first one. Takes an eye at the runner at second. And he'll pitch. That one just outside. Yeah, Justin Baker's been the leader for this Knights team. He's a senior. It's only his first year at the varsity level, and he's been very good this year, batting 464, third in the conference, if you can believe that. Early in the season, he's been great. Yeah, you love seeing program players like that sticking their way out and then making a big impact their senior year. That one called ball. Yeah, a little less velocity on uh, Bryce Brand's fastball early in this game. He's getting clocked at 87 on the heater so far. Baker takes a cut but fouls that one back. 2-2 Two -two count. Yeah, right here if you're Bryce Brain, you really got to get that put away pitch. It's been a lot of balls in play, a lot of great ABs so far from the Knights. Yeah, Kings, some very disciplined at bats so far. That's Brandon, the 2 2 pitch. And that one drops in. Mm. Beautiful curveball. Nasty from the Duke Blue Level commit. That's a strikeout pitch. If you're a Comets fan, you were looking for there. Yeah, and the Comets are going to be glad that Brand's getting his curveball uh, started early. It'll be Matthew Fortner, the first baseman. First lefty for the Knights to step into the box tonight. Yeah, Fortner. Junior, number 19, first base. He's done some pretty good this year. Just under 300 this year. It's Brian getting ahead of the count again. It's another heater there, up to 89 for Bryce Brain. He loves to stay around that like 90, 91 range. So you could see with the, the command issues early in the season that they're going to bring that velocity a little bit down to get that command. O2 count for Brandon. This will, this will open up his arsenal. That one popped up to third. And the Comets get underneath it. It'll be Alex Kelling to retire the inning. Will remain scoreless here, headed into the bottom of the first. Mason Comets and Kings Knights in the Trinity Baseball Classic.
Bottom of the first. Comets making their first plate appearance of the night, leading off for the Comets. It's going to be Drew Stevens, the second baseman. Yeah, Drew Stevens, first real chance at the varsity level this year. He's done a great job for this Comets team. He's committed to play Ashland, D2 school. The best one out there, almost D1. Really quality player over there at the hot corner. We'll watch two in the dirt. Yeah, and Stevens has worked his way up the lineup this year and now leading off in, in a big game. Yeah, Ryan Goldbrenster. It's been nasty for the Knights this year. Doesn't have the velo like, v -like, v like you would think to get all the strikeouts he has this year. He's at 33, 10 more than second place in the ECC. But he has the command, and right here, just four straight. Yeah, and correction on that final out of the top of first, it was Drew Stevens at third that made that play, not Alex Kelly. <laughs> Say so all of our baseball guys have the same haircut. Yeah. And uh, we didn't have again our first broadcast of the year, so I don't got the numbers down yet. Yeah, Coach Bly, uh <laughs> he loves to switch around his yeah. his players, the teams. So the the Ohio State commit Alex Kelling taking the plate now, as Stevens taking a big lead at first. Yeah, it seems the top five hitters of this Comets team, you're going to hear a lot of the word commit in the in the college level, anytime you can get D1 level or even the Big Ten level as Alex Kelly has real accomplishment. It's right there, Cole Branster finally gets on the board with strike one. Always a big confidence booster to get that first strike on the board. Absolutely. Comes getting a big lead out there, first base. Gold Branson, that one low and inside. Ken Stevens. Yeah, Kellen hasn't had the year that he would have hoped for to start this senior campaign for himself, but he's just really this leader for the Comets team, varsity athlete here for the Comets the last three years. So that gets away. Stevens, a little bit of hesitation, but he'll finally make his way to second. Yeah, big time here for the comps early to get in scoring position. Coach Bly loves those bunts. He loves to call it pressure offense throughout the program. It's been kind of the special thing that he's changed throughout the year. Comes putting pressure on the Knights early. 1-1 one, one count for Kelling. Goldbranson delivers again. That one gets away, and Stevens... Will make his way over to third untouched. And uh, not very often you make it over to third base with a clean jersey, uh, Isaac. Absolutely. And just Knights so far just giving the Comets a guy at third with nobody out. And against such a good team like the Comets, ranked second according to PBR in Ohio, just can't give it up like that. Kelling takes a cut. They get a 2 2 count. Kellen try to hit that on a different field here at Prasco. To be a little careful there, two and two. He's got to do a job here. Any ball in the infield. Goldbranson delivers. Kelly lays off. That one outside. A great pitch from Goldbranster. It's not there so far in this game. Hasn't located. Full count for Kelling. As he gets that one, it'll be high in the infield. Hit to the first baseman right in the sun, and he yeah. misses it. That sun is huge out there, right into the first baseman's eyes, and right there early again. Another costly mistake there for the Kings Knights to start this game off. As you said with Goldbranster, the first strike is huge, but that first out is huge as well. So it'll be Jake Hanley, the big presence 
The lefty steps up to the plate. Another pitch inside. Yeah, Hanley last time at this game didn't play as well as he sh could have. And I think right here in the senior year last time on this field with this Comets team is looking to make a difference. Kelly on his way to second. Hanley fouls it off. Yeah, early in this count. Wilson's going to the inside part of the Comets lefties. The Comets are trying to really pull that ball with the slow velo so far. Even count for Hanley. As Wilson delivers runner in motion again. As Kelling will get there standing up. Yeah, so far just sloppy from the Kings Knights. Not not catching throwing ball. Can't catch pop pop up right now. So it's it's big that they at least get an out here against Jake Hanley. Two one count. That pitch again inside, but called strike. Hanley didn't like that call too much. Yeah, it looked a little inside. If anything, I'd say he got him on the swing. It. Almost hit him. Yeah, Jake's looking for damage here, it looks like. He'll take a quick time. Regroup. Wilson delivers. Hanley puts that one on the ground. Stevens coming home. And it looks He's like he'll be safe at first. Wow. Look at Jake Hanley flying down the line. Has really tried working on his speed over the offseason. He's really a five-tool player. As he flies down the line there, no air at all. Just caught an infield hit. It's another, another play that the Kings Knights can't get an out on. And early, the Comets trying to make this ugly. Yeah, Baker just took his time a little bit too much at short. Getting the throw there. And uh, Hanley has got those long legs. Makes for long yeah. strides. It'll be Mark Rutherford up to bat for the Comets now. Yeah, Mark. Oh, yeah. And he takes one for the team. It's based just like that. Comets have the bases loaded with no outs and a run on the board. I was about to say, Mark is having a phenomenal season this year. But over there, first pitch gets beamed. Wilson trying to go to that inside pitch. Lost control of it. And earlier, Adam, starting to see the Comets not letting up on the gas so far on these Kings Knights. Yeah, and Comets, a very lefty heavy lineup, especially compared to most teams. So could be messing with, messing with Wilson a little bit, not used to facing all those lefties early on. Absolutely. Knights in this first scene and a little bit of a kerfuffle, I would have to say. It's Casey Doner, another senior on this team. And you wouldn't believe it, but so far these Comets, every single one of them that has stepped up to the plate has been a senior. As we said before, 17 seniors for this Comets lineup. Just makes you wonder next year for this team how different Coach Boy is going to approach his team. See how that's going to change for the Comets next year. That's Wilson's first pitch to Donor is low. Yeah, and this this season, uh, really an all or nothing for the Comets. They've Absolutely. had some program players that have been with, with, this, with the team for a while, and they've made a few uh, close runs to state two years ago, made it to the final four, but this year uh, they're looking to take home the trophy. But it's not going to be an easy path, and again tonight is just uh, another test with the top team in the ECC. Yeah, Wilson's really got to concentrate here on making the comments work for these runs. 2-0 and count. Donor's going to be looking to swing. Fouls that one off just a little bit late. Bases loaded here. No outs for the comments so far. Only one hit, but one run. 2-1 count as Donor is swinging again. And he shoots that one into the gap, fielded by the center fielder. Two runs come in for the Comets. All the way to third is Rutherford, and he's safe. 
Great base running from the Comets. What a swing from Casey Doner. And what a start for the Comets. Bats are moving early for this Comet team. Yeah, it's kind of a mixture of the Comets giving what the Knights are providing and the Comets doing on the on their own. It's been a uh, not an ideal first inning as it's been pitcher running to the Kings bullpen already. It'll be Anthony Sulek, the shortstop, up to bat for the Comets now as Wilson delivers. That one outside. Yes, yeah, Sulek dropped in the order a little bit. Hasn't had the greatest year, as most of these Comets haven't. It's been um, definitely a defensive um, year for the Comets so far. The bats haven't really woken up, so maybe this is the start. Off-speed drops in as Donor easily makes his way to second, so two runners in scoring position with no outs. Yeah, Comets are really just looking like they're running all over the Knights right now in this first inning. Two on for Sulik. Nobody out. 1-1 one, one count as Wilson delivers. Another good pitch. Is yeah, that's big count. for Wilson. It's a great spot. Low. It's big here. He can even get a strike out. Just an out here for the Knights. That one fouled back. Sulik trying to protect. And you got to like here for the Comets early, their approach that they've been getting into. Drew Stevens starting the game off, looking for a strike, didn't get one. And then, so, um, not, excuse me, not so look, um, Kelling had a great A-B, had a couple swings, and then force an air on the Knights. So it's been a great approach from the Comets so far. So look, swings on the inside pitch. Rutherford will tag up, and he gets home. And spiked the out, a good protection swing there as he's able to put that inside pitch up into the air and a nice catch Absolutely. from the left fielder, Clever. Yeah, Clever with a nice catch there. Helps this guy out. Wilson, he got the first out of the inning, but not before Comets. Another guy in scoring position. It's four to nothing here with only two hits on the Comets. They're, they're looking like here. It's either they said Mark Rutherford yeah, I think they're went trying to early. Him a little early but yeah, looked or like, looked like to me he, he stayed until he caught it. Yeah, and al also it looks like they point at home like Mark didn't touch home, but it looked clear as day as he did. Nonetheless. Brad Hart. And Hart will show bunt. Pulls back on the strike. Sulik dancing around at second base. That pitch outside. And Hart served as more defensive specialist for, this, for the team last year. Yep. Uh, mainly had a Designated hitter come in and hit for him, but this year hitting, hitting in the seven seven position and really worked on his bat this offseason. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great job of hitting it the other way. Again, early. Nice, there are the Comets. Nice inside pitch from Wilson. The Comets really trying to pull that inside pitch. Wilson's done a really good job of combining that outside curveball to that inside a little cutter slash fastball. Just can't find that strikeout pitch, the ground ball pitch so far in this first. Two two count for Hart. Fouls that one on the first baseline. Another great A B for the comet so far. It's Brad Hart. He's got a lot of speed on him. 
So any ball in the infield would have to be hurried. Yeah, we've already seen one infield hit by Jay Canley. Kind of the unexpected culprit. Absolutely, to do as well. yeah. 2 2 count. Hart grounds that one to first. Sulik will advance to third, but the, the Knights tack on their second out of the first. Yes, yeah, so that's, a, that's a great pitch there from Wilson to get that out there. Little jam job from Hart as here Nate Derrick gets his chance in the DH spot today. Derek watches strike one. Snead Derek has been really good so far for the Comets team. A little bit of an unexpected senior to get the job done. So far he has. Yeah, Derek played a, played a key role on kind of hyping the team up these, last year, but yeah, this year he's been able to get the bats moving. As he's retired there for the third out. Comets off to a hot start offensively as they add four runs in the bottom of the first. We'll be back with you for second inning action here on Mason Sports Radio. Bryce Brennan back on the mound for the Comets as he catches louder milk swinging on the first pitch. Yeah, Comets with a really good first inning of play there, looking for that shutdown one, two, three inning to keep momentum. That pitch a little bit too inside as our second hit by pitch of the day. Yeah, it's there, a little bit of the control issues that we have seen early in this year for Bryce Brandon. And hit by pitch, and if you're the comments, you can't be given extra chances as the Knights did to them in the first inning. You just got to keep foot on the gas pedal, let your defense work. It'll be Hayden Petrie now, the Knights catcher, up to bat. And Brandon will get him swinging on the first pitch. 
Brandon. Really nice fastball there. That pitch high, clocking in at 89. Comments looking for that double play. You were the one guy on, nobody out. Good frame there by Rutherford. It's Brandon now ahead in the count, one, two. As he takes an eye on the runner at first. Great that spot. Just off. Great spot and great frame. first real quick just just to show uh, he's still thinking about that runner yeah, on base keep him honest a little bit Brandon delivers and gets Petrie on the high fastball yeah it looks like in the bottom of this order the Knights haven't really seen a guy like Bryce Brandon throwing this hard so looks like they're a little bit of confused so far. Yeah, normally when you're playing against a team and you've got a pitcher throwing 89, 90, uh, hovering around that range, you're thinking, wow, I mean, it doesn't get much faster than that in high school baseball. But then when you look at this Comets team and you've <laughs> you got, got Jake Hanley, you've got Jake Hanley, <laughs> you can hit 96. It's uh, yeah, uh, pretty crazy the depth the Comets have at the, at the pitching position. And I think this year is a, is, a, is a downgrade compared to years past yeah. when you have people like Noah Samuel and Brendan Garula, Michael Murphy, who have come through the program in the past few years. Shows how good the Comets pitching staff and pitching coaches have been. That ball hit up the middle, hits off the base. And Loudermilk will hold up at second. And a little bit of an unlucky play there for Sulik as he's in the right position, just... Waited on the ball a little too much yeah. and hit the base. Yeah, unfortunate break there for the Comets. But if you're the Knights, you'll take anything you can get right now down four early in this game to a really good Comets team. But Bryce Brandt, what I saw last AB that I liked from him is he's working that outside corner. Umpire today behind the plate is generously calling that outside pitch. So look for the Comets to work out there for the rest of the day. Braden Laker steps into the box. That one low and outside. Another senior for this Kings team. Nice fastball there from Brandon. That's a great pitch. I think I think if you're Bryce Brain, you just gotta stay with the fastball. Kings hasn't really shown that they can do a lot with it so far besides that lone double to right field over Casey's head. Brandon checks on ladder milk at, at second. So runners on one and two. The one one count. That pitch low. Rutherford picks it up quickly. Mark doing a great job back there. Four-year starter for this varsity Comets team. Yeah, and just starting to take the full-time catcher reps. As yeah. Brady Bly was taking him last year along with Nick Stroud. Or for the past few years and then yeah. with Nick Stroud last year. Yeah, it's been a it's been a mixture of him and JJ Darst, but JJ Darst just went down with an injury, I believe with something in his hand. So so far it'll be Mark doing the duties down there. Rutherford back to first. And umpire will call him safe. What a throw there from Mark. Yeah, heads up play there by the 
by Rutherford. So Brandon will strike Laker out and Kellen Rich step up to the plate. Yeah, it's a real big AB for the Knights. You got to be thinking fastball down in this lineup and take it backside here. Brandon looks back at second. That one high. 1-0 one -oh count with two down. Yeah, right there. Rich just isn't looking really for the fastball there. And you got to, if you're down this order, you really got to be looking for that fastball. And Bryce Brand hasn't really controlled that off speed this year or today. So you got to be thinking fastball right here. Pick off back to Lauder Milk. Runners on first and second. Brandon would be relieved to get oh. out of this inning with by retiring Rich as he fouls the third pitch off. Yeah, Laudermilk over there at second has seven steals early for the Knights. Only in ten games played, he's got seven swipes. It's pretty impressive there. Not a good pitch there, just misses high. It's a big pitch coming here early in this game. 2-2 two, two count. Guys on second and first. Delivery from Brennan. Just fouled off. Rutherford couldn't get it in the mitt. Two, two, and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs with two runners on. So I guess. Yeah, two's everywhere. Two's everywhere, yeah. As 23 delivers, and he'll retire. Kellen Rich to keep the Knights scoreless. 4 0, the Mason lead, heading into the bottom of the second here at the beautiful Prasco Park. be Cade Land here, the junior left fielder to step into the box for Mason. It's that pitch inside. And again, 
Yeah, Cade has been that junior among all the seniors that has been the guy this year for the Comets. Yeah, and again, Wilson struggling with those lefty, these le lefty Comet hitters. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of inside pitches. Because Wilson has thrown four innings this year, as 1K, and um, kind of just put him in here against the Comets. Yeah, we were expecting to uh, see the the Kings ace, Ryan Goldbranson, uh, but as I heard earlier in the broadcast, yeah. we were calling him yeah. Goldbranson because we almost wrong. just assumed. But you would expect. Uh, with Wilson throwing not very fast that you would think that's the reason why. Land here, fouls that one off his left ankle. And those, yeah, uh, that's not where you want it. Yeah, never uh, fun pitches. Yeah, let's hope Cade can just put over that right field wall so he can just trot around the bases. Don't have to worry about that ankle. Delivery is fouled off again. Another quality AB here for the Comets. Skade batting around 200 this year hasn't been the greatest year, but also it's his first year on varsity. And having him the next couple of years is going to be big for this Comets team. That one hit in front of the plate. It's a full count now for Lane here. Yeah, big A-B here. Lane here takes a cut on it. Fielded by the first baseman and first out retired. Yeah, it's another inside pitch that the Comets are chasing. Looks like it might have a little bit of run on it. Might be a little cutter that Wilson's getting these guys with so far. So we're back to the top. Stevens, who got it all started with the walk. That one just inside from Wilson, 1-0 count. So even though the scoreboard says it's a 4 nothing ball game, both teams have two only two hits. So yeah. It shows the difference in defensive play so far tonight. Yeah, and um, Kings has 19 errors this year, first in the conference. Yeah, and only one error was – recorded as an yeah. air tonight, but there's three plays that probably could have gone down as. Yeah, for as sure. Points. And Stevens. It got, it got hit off his foot, and Stevens, and they're counting him out. It clearly hit off Stevens' foot. He kind of hesitated out of the box. Coach Bly is going to come over and try to talk with the umpire. So I'll try to go back on the broadcast and watch. Yeah, I thought for sure it hit Stevens. But the umpires are going to confess and call him out. It's a little bit of chatter here from the Comet student section talking to the umpire. Saying, get some help. Has two outs away here for Kelling. First pitch there. Good inning there for Wilson. As the comments go, one, two, three, we'll head to the bottom of the second, excuse me, top of the third here on Mason Sports Radio.
Back here in the top of the third, Drew Burdine set to lead things off for the Knights. Yeah, back to the top here for the Knights. Hasn't gone how they would have hoped at all here at Prasco Park. Comets so far, they've played an all right game. They've just gotten help from the Knights so far in this ball game. Put up a four spot in the first. Yeah, Knights practically handed them two runs in the first inning. Comets took full advantage of the momentum and added another two on the board. So that those four runs definitely going to add some insurance. So that pitch just high from Brandon. Yeah, here Brandon needs to limit the the walks, especially against a team that hasn't really shown hard contact. As let's see if Brandon can get back in the count here. He steps and zooms that one in. Wow. And they're going to say he did not go. Burdine did not go. And again, Adam, I think he for sure went. <laughs> I mean, but like, if the umpires call it, it's, it's official. So the Knights, again, will get a guy on to start off an inning. They're down four, but they've had the opportunities. It looks like they will have the opportunities in this game. It'll be Caden Clever. Up to bat now for Knights is Brandon. Was that one? That one high at Brandon. This is going to be a very important at bat here. Yeah, so the difference between two runners on and then and one runner with one out is uh, is very big. That pitch just low. Yep, Comets are going to, Brand's really got to give him an opportunity here. Have his defense play. It's there again. 3-0 count. Brandon, it's just been the control, as we've said, early in this game. Four straight balls for Brandon as Clever will trot his way down to first base. And Rutherford will head to the mound for a quick quick meeting with Brandon. Again, Brandon pitched well those first two innings, only giving up two hits. But it's the, it's been the Comets defense so far that's prevailed. Yeah, it's definitely he's definitely got the stuff. He's he's a D one athlete going to Duke. Very smart kid. And he's just gotta find it in the zone here. It's just been it's been the battle of teams giving the other selves advantage. So Brand's really gotta find it here, dig deep. Kings with an opportunity to put some runs on the board. Yeah, it's Brandon's first pitch of ball. Good miss there yeah. from Brandon. It's just going to get that off speed to break in the zone. Yeah, he gets that one too. 1 1 count now for Baker. And Baker, one of the top hitters on this Kings team. Hit 464 this year. Yeah, Baker's been really solid in the middle of this order. Rutherford able to knock that one down and stop. Really good pick there from Rutherford to keep the runners at bay. Think of your brain, you just gotta throw a heater. Just hope that's that's there. That one hit right past Hanley. Donor will hit the cutoff. And it'll stop 
Burdine from coming in, but bases loaded, no outs. This looking a very familiar position, but flipped from the first inning. As this exact situation happened, bases loaded with no outs for the Comets in the top in the bottom of the first. Yeah, absolutely. It was a it was a great pitch there from Bryce Brandon. That was just, it was a good rip from yeah. Baker. Got the ground ball. Hanley couldn't corral it in. Here it is. Again, bases loaded. Nobody out. With your cleanup hitter on. As the Comets look to get someone warmed in the pen. Oh, in this game, not sure who yet. Catchers making their way down. So it's Eric Schmuel, it's his birthday, so maybe uh, the birthday boy will get some, get some action tonight. He is supposed to be in that lineup today. One one count for Fortner. He's looking to put this ball in the air. And chops it to Stevens. Stevens elects to go to first. And Comets will take the out as one runner comes in for the Knights. Yeah, Knights getting on the board there. And still got two guys in scoring position for one of your guys, Fortnier. That's just big for the Comets to get out there. Yeah, I, I like that decision by Stevens. He was in the grass, didn't want, didn't want to risk. Uh, that would have been a tough throw to second. Yeah. Especially uh, with the way way Baker was had a big jump. Yeah, Loudermilk, as we, as he steps to the play here, we mentioned he has seven stolen bases in this game. Not in this game, in the season. So look for him to maybe drop a bunt down if that's what Kings elects to do. Two count early, so but uh, likely not a possibility anymore. Yeah, no. It's Brand, great job getting up in the count so we can play with a couple pitches here. Really need that strikeout. So step off the mound, regroup. Up two strike, up two pitches in the count. Brandon delivers, strike three. Yeah, it's a great spot. Pins that one on the outside corner. Great. Yeah, pitch. exactly what you want there. If you're Bryce Brand, living that outside corner, umpires caught it all day. Beautifully executed pitch. It's Petri. We'll stand here. That curveball a little high. And Isaac, it always makes me chuckle every time I look down the third baseline up. This Comet team is got 17 seniors, so they've got a lot of boys. Oh, the yeah. Roster is, the dugout almost seems to be overflowing, and they're always, they've always got some sort of shenanigans going on. Sometimes yeah. they've got the pickle. Sometimes they've got, a, I believe, a Batman mask. There's always something. something oh, yeah, they had those there. two guys last year. They got a lot of, as he said, seniors that – like to talk it up in the dugout, and that's exactly what Coach Bly loves to hear. Some encouragement for the pitcher or the batter up. Good pitch for Brandon as Petrie watches strike one, two one count. This brand's really got to walk in here, two guys on. And for the Knights, you really got to get these two in to make up for the mistakes you made in the first. Yeah, and on the flip side, Brandon being able to skate this inning with just one run would be would be a win, especially when you have the bases loaded, no outs. Comets bullpen, no one warmed so far. Just a lot of standing around, seeing if Bryce Brandon can get out of the inning. Three 
one pitch is high. The spaces will fill up again, and the pitcher Wilson will head into the box and uh, help his own cause out here. I was surprised to not see a uh, a talk here from Coach Heifel, the pitching coach. The two outs, trusting his senior. Wilson fouls that one back. Brandon, that one just low and outside. Even count at one, one, one. And Brand's really got to get out of this any way he can. Good Great frame spot. by Rutherford. Yeah, it's a really nice frame from Rutherford. Really nice spot. That's Wilson. Down 1-2, Brandon looking to escape this inning and stop the bleeding, and he does. Beautiful curveball there will retire Danny Wilson as the Knights tack on their first run of the game here in the top of the third. Comets looking to match that here in the bottom. Back here at Prasco Park as Indiana commit Jake Hanley will step into the box. Yeah, when this kid steps in the box, all cameras are on, all phones are silenced. You can see the outfielders take a few steps back as well. Yeah, and when there's a kid that's 6'5", can hit the ball out of the stadium, it's pretty intimidating. That one grounded to the second baseman. And Knights will retire him. Hanley had an infield single his first at bat, so uh, we had to hold yeah. our breaths to the last second there to see if he could make it again in time. He has Jake. Jess missed that one. Wilson caught a little bit too much plate on that inside fastball. Now Rutherford got beamed his first time. It's been the, the highlight of this Comets offense so far. 
And Rutherford rips that one into left center as it drops down, rolling all the way to the fence. Rutherford gonna keep going, trying to get to third. Yeah, he's out. And he's done. Yeah, Rutherford, really nice swing there. Caught it in the gap, right at that 385 sign. Really nice stroke. But I wouldn't say he's the fastest out of these yeah, not the Comets fastest guys. I'm a little surprised we saw uh, Coach Bly uh, waving, waving him on there. Yeah, but those Comets, they love to be aggressive. As that ball smoked. As Donor rips that one in the gap. Yeah, Donor's had himself a day so far. He's got that double as well as that single right there. And that would have either scored that run or had another threat here instead. Two outs, guy on for Sulik. Good pitch there from Wilson. You can see Wilson starting to get a lot more confident here. Now in the third inning, Asulik hits that one right to the third baseman, and he'll send it to second for the final out of the inning. A very quick bottom of the third, and we'll be back with you for the fourth inning action. Fourth inning action now. It has to be Braden Laker to step up for the Knights as he hits that one to Sulik at short, fields it cleanly, and a clean scoop from Hanley at first to make it one down. A great play there from Sulik. That's big there for Brand to get that one pitch out. Hasn't located particularly well so far. Has had a good outing though. Only one run on three hits through three. That one hit to Stevens, bobbles it. It's able to make up for it there. Just put some velocity on that ball headed to first. Yeah, almost had to. That speed over there. As he has a little smile as he tosses the ball back to Brandon. It's a little sigh of relief after, after that play. Top of the order here, Burdine. Has two pitches, two outs right here. Yeah, 
and correct me if I'm wrong, Isaac, because you, you're obviously in the program, <laughs> but Steven's mainly a second base, second baseman at shortstop, right? Yeah, it's kind of like the whole infield besides Jay Canley are shortstops, essentially. There's just guys that move around, so like, yeah, he can play second, he can play short. It's kind of just all three of those guys out there just flip around, it seems like. That's what Coach Bly has them. Yeah, we, and we again, we saw Rutherford taken playing third in the majority of last year. And he would catch for... Catch about once once every uh, yeah. once every rotation. So you're really efficient inning here for Bryce Brandy. If he can get this batter top of the order in Burdine, so that saves us some uh, some breath up here in the box. Oh yeah. Rutherford clearing out his space a little bit for the one two delivery. Brandon Burdine. Nasty. Bryce Brandon with the curveball in the outside corner. Get the Knights in order. The Comets will come in to hit from the bottom of the fourth inning here at Prasco Park. Comets lead four to one. The Comets lead 4-1 to one here at Prasco Park. 1-2-3 inning from Bryce Brand as here Brad Hart will lead off for the Comets. As Kings has done a great job these last two innings of holding the Comets to the minimum. So that pitch is fouled away from Brad Hart. Hart, he's got a lot of speed as he waits on that pitch and grounds it to se short, second, short, excuse me, and an air is that one not fielded very cleanly and thrown, thrown wide to Fortner at first. Yeah, as we've seen most of this year coming into this game, there's been 19 airs in 10 games for Kings, and if you want to beat great teams like the Mason Comets, that is not the way it's going to work. So he's got two errors so far that pop up to the first baseman. And right there, it's shortstop. As Nate Derrick struck out his first time, we'll step in here. As Derrick will pop a bunt down, almost gets there. It'll move Hart over to second. Now one out on the board. And sacrificing that bat for a sacrifice bun isn't easy, but Nate Derrick executes perfectly. There is Cade Landier. We'll step up for the comments.
And Hart will head over to third. And he's called out. Good recovery from the catcher. It's the Comets just being very aggressive. And that's what Coach Bly loves to see from his team is being aggressive, but a little too aggressive there. The Comets have taken themselves out of a couple innings so far as Mark Rutherford in the prior inning got thrown out third. And there, Landier. <laughs> that, that one got stuck in his glove. Beautiful play by the short or the second baseman. But uh, ripped a little bit of hold as I guess it kind of a little bit of yeah, a little yeah. bit of glove, bit of glove stuck there. there. He tried getting it out, trying to throw out Kate and couldn't. Not sure he had, would have had enough time anyways. No. But nonetheless, nice uh, diving effort. As pickoff goes away, Landier is going to go second, and he'll be there with a throw, but will be late. Good read there from Landier. As what we've seen from when the Comets get thrown out of the next pitch, it's usually a hit as Cade did it there. Comets have five hits on four runs. Adam, tell me what you think about this, but they called that one at second base an error for the Knights, as it looks like. It's their third error of the day. Yeah, I'm not, a little surprised we saw that one called an error, but I guess that kind of normalizes that error count as that one hit deep into left center. Drops over the head of the shortstop. And Stevens is going to third. And he makes it, Drew Stevens. is hyped after that one. And has a little celebration after the play. What a knock from Drew play. Stevens. As the umpire having to calm him down a little bit, got a little too excited after that celebration. I mean, that ball was pimped to left center from Drew Stevens, really got all of it. It's interesting to see if that's back at Mason's place. If that gets out. I would say Prasco's got a deep center field wall, 400 feet plus. Uh, you've got to hit about 100 feet tall. Yeah, to get to that wall up there. As uh, I don't think anybody's going to take one. Uh, really, hey, Jake, I Jake's got to get it on the nose, I yeah. think, to get a chance at it. It's a beautiful scenery here at Prasco Park. Comets leave five to one. Almost took themselves out of the inning, but a two out rally from Cade Landier up the middle. Gets the Comets going. And Wilson's done a great job of mixing up his pitches in the Comets, but this inning, the Comets have just gotten all of them. And Kelling, beautiful. Beautiful off the bat there as he drops that one into right field. And he'll bring Stevens home. Or, excuse me. Yeah, he'll bring Stevens bring home. Bring Stevens home. Yeah. As uh, Coach of the Knights will head to the mound. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they give uh, Wilson a chance at Hanley. Just based off the pitches I've seen from Wilson so far, it looks like a little bit of Fatigue has came into the game from him. He's only thrown four innings prior to this start and facing the Comets offense, you'll get gray hairs. So it's just so tough for Wilson. Yeah, we haven't seen any motion to the bullpen, so looks like Lance are going to stick with Wilson. So Kelly on second, and we've got a, a guy that can hit that can hit a baseball coming up to the plate, or excuse me, coming at first. Yeah, Jake Jake has had a an all right season as as we've checked earlier from his freshman season. His freshman season was his best year for, at Mason, and then sophomore year was a little bit worse. Junior year was a little bit worse. As yeah, they'll they'll go to the bullpen here. 
So a little bit of change of thought for yeah, <laughs> from the coach after he had the walk back to the dugout. Yeah, it looked like there. Maybe didn't know a hand was coming up to the plate. Yeah, I think I think he had like a lot of confidence in Wilson there, and then he saw that the guy in the bullpen was ready, and then looking at the guy up to bat, I think I think it's the right decision there. Wilson with not the greatest outing, but you got to give him a little bit of leeway. Only four innings, as we said. Come to put a six spot on him, in three and two thirds for Wilson. Yeah, this is a very tough environment to play in. Saturday night, first Trinity Classic. Absolutely. Under the lights as Under well. Under the lights. So many people. Big showing from both Mason and Kings tonight. As this game just in the Comets' backyard. As a little bit of history from these games. Trinity Classic every year up here at Prasco Park. The Comets... In the last 10, have won 7 out of the 10, 7-3 and three against Kings. But in the last 3, it has been Kings winning the last 2 out of 3. So Comets looking to get a little bit of revenge here in this series. Looking like right here, it's going to work for them. So they're up 6-1. to one. Those 3 airs are costly. As Kings, the side armor, Riley Abrams will check into the game. It's a little funky delivery. Yeah, every time I watch those side armors, it just makes me cringe. Yeah, it's 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 an it's a weird angle for your elbow, I would say. So, and I, I had I had have elbow surgery. Yeah. Before, and I was in middle school, and that especially just like irks me. I was with my yeah. uh, my arm. I'm like, oh my gosh. Especially be, when you see them in like so slow awful. motion. Yeah. And they're like slowly crackling. As Jake Hanley will check into the box for his third AB. Had that infield hit in the first. And then his second A.B. grounded out to first. So he's one for two on the evening. Good pitch there. From Abrams. From Abrams. This pins the inside corner. So I wouldn't expect a lot of fastballs here. As that one it's knocked boy. high in the air by Hanley off the, on the ground ball. And he takes a very, very wide round there. Yeah, it's just good hitting from Jake Hanley just, um, with the hit and run on display, hitting it the other way and making the shortstop really make yeah. a play there. And I like I like how Abrams threw that pitch off the plate because uh, you got to be careful throwing the yeah. ball inside on, on Jake Hanley because he will pull it out of the park. Mark Rutherford really knocked one his last time. He's been hitting really well lately for this Comets team. A little bit of a expression there from Mark Rutherford. It's been like a interesting pitch there from Abrams. It's getting Mark looking like that. So oh and one cow here to Mark Rutherford. That one outside, Hanley heading a second. And that'll put two runners in scoring position with two outs. Yeah, Jake for six five is just kind of crazy fast. I mean, you saw you saw the speed already on display. That infield hit. Rutherford knocks that one to second. Nice play by the second baseman. Throw is long. But the first baseman was able to keep his foot on the bag. So really nice play there. Wow. From uh, Fortner. I've been very impressed with Fortner uh, 
Kings tonight. He's made a few really nice defensive plays, and Absolutely. he's been able to get the bat moving. But the Comets add two runs to their total to end the fourth, six to one, the score. As got potentially three more innings left here at the beautiful Prasco Park. He'll be clever up to bat for the Knights. Start off the fifth inning. Brandon still in the game. Again, that five pitch uh, inning, last inning, certainly going to add. His pitch count's not too high right now. So, Yeah, he had a great last inning, really controlling the zone as there he throws one by. Clever. And we were talking at the break there as Kings, they haven't really been able to hit hit Brandon's velocity so far tonight, yeah. so he doesn't really need to worry about getting too fancy here in the fifth. Just put some balls in the zone and letting his defense work, especially with the fence here at Prasco Park. Uh, yeah. Not sure you have to worry about uh, too many balls leaving. The, leaving. Another beautiful pitch there on the – he gets him with the fastball. Yes, Cliver set himself a game. He had, a, he had that double in the first – only real solid contact here for the Knights so far and had that play in left field. But there will be a K. From Bryce Brandon. And he looks like he's really settling into this game. Yeah, it's huge that all three of these Comets, I guess normal starters of Brandon and then both the Hanley brothers, getting comfortable as we start to make progress here in the season because you can have you can have a great a great offensive team but it's gonna be your pitching that that gets you gets you going in the tournament so absolutely if they can have three guys that can that can throw the rock down the stretch that's gonna be huge. Yeah and you got Michael Bilo as well. Have, again there's so much so much talent on this comp team. That's Kelling Fielded that ball late and couldn't make the throw in time. Good stretch by Hanley to try to make the most of it. But That was a great play from Kellen, yeah. but it's a good hit up the middle. King's getting something going here. One out. Nice inside strike there. It's a great pitch there. Fortner up to bat, the lefty. He's dangerous, especially with the runner on. Yeah, Fortner's got a lot of power in that bat. That pitch high and inside. Rutherford takes a quick stare back to first. I 
as nobody's tried so far for the Knights to get that stolen base. As that one hit into left field, but land here. Can't get a hold of it, and it goes past him as the Knights are running. And that one going to turn into two extra bases for the Knights. Yeah, it looks like the ball just kept tailing for Kate out there in left field. And now the Comets make an error. So now, all of a sudden, you get these two in. You're within three for your yeah. Kings. Four total errors in this game. Arguably five, but one was not recorded. Again, been very impressed with, with the way Brandon's pitched today. Yeah, I think Brandon just said, uh, I want to go with that heater against Louder Milk here. Louder Milk has a lot of speed. Be interested to see what he does here with the guys on. And Louder Milk rips it into left field. Land here is underneath it. Runner tags up home. That one goes deep. That'll make him go to third. And not the right idea there from Land here. He was trying to get the runner at home. That then let Fortner get to third. As he chose to go past his cutoff man. And that'll bring a runner in. Yeah, really loud contact there from Loudermilk. Really hard hit ball off the screws just right at Cade. It's a great spot. It's been called a couple times tonight. Comet's up 6-2. Here in a high scoring affair in the last couple of games. In this series, it's been two to one, three to one. And that one takes a very friendly Mason bounce off the backstop. So that'll hold Fortner at third. And you saw a some huge sigh of relief from Brandon oh, there. Yeah. One might have slipped out of his hand here in the 2 0 count. Let's see if Brandon can back, get back in that strike zone here for the comments. Brandon gets it done with his fastball there. 2-1 count. Yeah, Brandon a lot more comfortable with his, with his fastball. It's, that's his number one pitch. But yeah, uh, That was nasty. That was a nasty off speed there too. Yeah, when he controls that pitch, it's almost unhittable. It's just been whether he can do that. And here I, I would not be surprised if he went right back to it. Does just that, and he catches Petrie swinging. And that will end the top of the fifth. One runner comes in for the Knights. The Comets still hold a four-score four lead over the Knights heading into the bottom of the fifth. We'll be back with you from the action here at Prasco Park.
Casey Doner up to bat for the Comets in the bottom of the fifth. Guess it'll be Abrams still on the mound for the Knights. As Casey Doner's had a very nice day today. Had a backside single and then that little knock to left field. It's a very good pitch there from Abrams. So yeah, a little surprised we didn't see that called a strike. Yeah, he's sitting at the high 70s, but with that drastic spin on the ball, with that arm angle, it's going to look a little bit faster. That pitch high. 3-0 count for Donor. So we'll be taking this one. And he walks the first on four straight balls. Sulik will trot back into the box. Yeah, Sulik had a good day today as well. This Comets team. It's pretty much been one through nine for this team. Can count on all of them to get you a hit, steal a base, pretty much everything you need in this lineup so far. They just haven't really produced on the offensive end. Today they've done very well. Knights expecting movement from Donor as Sulik showed, showed, showed bunt. Yes, yeah, the Comets have uh, stole a lot in this in this game today. I wouldn't be surprised with Doan over there at first that he goes. That pitch drops. 1-1 one, one count. It's a great pitch, but a great take. There from Sulik. Especially off that sidearm release. That yeah, ball just did not. And Sulik will foul. The third pitch back. It's one two count. Eight seniors in this Comets starting nine. That's pretty special what you don't see all the time. There's been a couple of rumors that Kings have had a couple guys that have left the team and quit and just for this comp seem to have so many seniors stay through the program and uh it's been so big for them as you said eight of the nine are starting on this comets lineup yeah and Sulik called on a third strike there coach Bly wasn't happy with the call looked a little little low and outside to me but again we've been seeing that that outside pitch being called all night you got to protect the two strikes. Yeah, absolutely. As Donor is moving, good throw by the catcher, but Donor is there just a tad early. Yeah, what a jump from Casey Donor right there. All the speed in the world. Get him there at second. Yeah, and really, catcher couldn't have played that one much better. It was just a good jump by Donor. That was a hose from catcher right there. Hart puts that one in the air. And fielded cleanly in center field. Donor will hold up at second. That's Drew Johnson. We'll get a chance. It looks like. Yeah, Drew J getting his chance here. He'll be in for Nate Derrick in that DH spot. Won't affect with any positional changes. And we've seen a little bit Drew Johnson getting his chance. Last couple of games, he's pinch hit. He's had his chances in DH spots. 
Drew Johnson, the brother of former Comet star Max Johnson. Planet Rice, Planet yeah. Rice now. He was in Indiana and moved down to Texas. Doing very well at Rice. As he watches strike one. Andrew Johnson, quick kid on the bases. So any ball hits to that left side, it'll be a tough play. And Johnson rips that one past the third baseman. Donor's headed home. And he was out by a landslide. Comets have been very aggressive on the bases today. And Coach Bly, just a little bit aggressive so far in this game and just took him out of a couple innings. Great shot there from Drew Johnson. Hit the left field, but the Comets will keep their four-run lead going into the next last innings, top of the sixth. Here the Kings stay with us in Mason Sports Radio. Eric Schmulowitz now in the game for the Comets as his first first pitch fouled off by Wilson. Yeah, Eric Schmulowitz done a very good job for this Comets team. This is 0 0.75 ERA so far this year. We mentioned special day for Eric. Not, not only is he getting to play yeah. the Trinity Classic, but he's the birthday boy. Oh, yeah. Off to early lead in the count, 0-2. And gets him with the off speed. They're just having some fun out there on his birthday. A little bit of curveballs. That's just diving away from those righties. Yeah, that's a good way to start the inning. Schmulowitz. You got Danny Wilson there. And uh, yeah, he uh, has a very different release than Brandon. He likes to hold. Yeah, hold, hold that spot hold at the that top. spot at the top for a little bit and try to get the uh, batter a little anxious and go. 
And especially when he throws that off speed, he kind of hits you with the, with the double. Makes you think a little too much. That pitch fouled off. That's Eric. Well, he's like to say this year he's been pretty good besides in practice against Jake Hanley. <laughs> Jake's gotten yard against yard against him a couple times, but everybody else. Luckily, Jake Hanley's over there at first base on his side this time. Roswick fouls another one off. Nick Roswick recently uh, checked in. Yeah. He, Pinch hitter here, trying out his options. That pitch That's a great spot. Inside, but good spot on the one two. A very good spot there from Eric Schmoltz. Put some velocity on that one too. Two two count, and he gets him with the curveball. Yeah, he saw that coming the whole way. Eric is controlling his curveball like I've never seen him control his curveball before. So he's having. Really good day so far. And Eric Schmultz, also a fellow St. Louis Cardinals fan, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm a little biased. I, I see him in last him. right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> just one, I think one under 500, so. Reds aren't doing that much better. What do you get with one, up, yeah, one over 500? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, we got our rounds against the uh, fans in here in Chicago White Sox. A dying breed, so that's one thing that Eric oh, and yeah. I can, can agree on. Well, he's dealing right now. One more and almost at the immaculate inning here for Eric Schmoltz. So we need him on the Cardinals pitching staff. <laughs> there's not a lot over there. No, there's not. That's what I've heard. One two count with two outs. Schmulot's looking to go one two three, all with K's. Almost catches Rich swinging there, but Rich does a good job of laying off. He thought about it. Yeah, Eric didn't get his chances in the first three years here at high school, but his senior years really came on the scene here for the Comets. Another pitch low and outside. Makes it full. It's right here, Eric. Really needs to dial it in here to get rich. Schwilwitz delivers. That curveball fouled off. It's top of the sixth already. Chances are running out here for this this Knights team. Puts that one in the air into right center and good communication from the Comets outfield as Brad Hart pulls it in. Both hats of Kate of uh, Hart and Donor fly off. So Schmolitz will go one, two, three to end the top of the sixth. Comets Looking to add some more insurance on the bottom of the sixth.
Sixth inning pitching change for the Knights. We drew Burdine moving in from the outfield as he'll face eight, nine, and one for the Comets, or excuse me, nine, one, and two for the Comets. Cade Land here stepping up to bat. The only junior. Yeah, Burdine. In starting lineup. He's had a good day at the plate. It's racking up to 85. Comets have only seen a max of maybe 81. So this will be a Velo change look. It's there right back, right past him. On two count. That pitch high. Comet fans always love coming to Prasco Park. It's all the oh yeah. all of the free food and festivities. Great atmosphere. Blessed to have a such an amazing venue here in Mason. Not, oh yeah. Not a not many communities have an opportunity like this. This kid's working himself in a good at bat. Started that bat 0-2, a couple of fouls spilled away in 2-2. Two and, two. and here staying alive. And a little bit of change all around the field for the Knights. Wilson, who was pitching the start, has moved over to third. Bird on it again coming in from the outfield. As Lane here fouls that one off again. That pitch clocking in at 86. Lane here just a little bit late on the pitch. Well, it may be this has been from Landier. It's a little late on the fastball, but enough to spill it away. Hasn't looked the most comfortable in this AB, but making it work so far. A beautiful pitch there from Burdine as he retires the junior. And it'll be Drew Stevens looking to replicate his last at bat as he hit a triple. Yeah, he smoked that ball last time over the head of the pitcher. It was now Burdine. Yeah, but Drew's really had a breakout season so far for the Comets. And he rips that one into left field. And hits it with authority on the first pitch. Yeah, Drew, Drew's been smoking the ball lately, and that's exactly what you see there. First pitch out in front. Perfect swing there on the barrel. So now Kellen has had a bit of a quiet day so far. See if he can get it going. Has one hit on the day. Check on Stevens back at first. Stevens, very best aggressive on the base path. He was thrown out at third. His first, first step after his first at bat, and you've seen him taking some very big leads. As Kelly hits that one straight up to the catcher, or to, and the pitcher has to field it. They'll get the out at second, but miscommunication and. Coach for the Knights, not going to like his uh, his pitcher taking that one. Yeah, I think that's a catcher's ball all the way. But in that that darkness in the sky, it's tough to see the ball there. Yeah, I, I, was, I don't think Petrie just never had a, never had an eye on it. And Birdheimer's just a little late to the party. It's Jake here. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't mind facing the extra velocity because that uh, just adds to more exit velocity. Yes, he sees that curveball there. It's what's gonna. It's what he's probably gonna see a lot of. That curveball right there is his fastball is right in Jake's wheelhouse. Velo wise. Good pitch there from Burnham, but doesn't get the call. Great pitch. There on no one count. Yeah, Ump is not 
He's been playing a very outside zone so yeah. far tonight. But he's been consistent. That's the thing I always look for in umps. I like consistency, so. Stevens. It's like an A Catch move there. close there. Yeah. It's best move there. Yeah, so I think everybody at Prasco Park here wants to see Jake get a get all get on one here late in this inning. Let's see, waves that one. Yeah, that not not a very smart swing. So one two. If you're Jake Canley, you got to be sitting on that curveball. As you know, doesn't want to go that fastball too many times. to delivery here. Spurdine trying to mess with Hanley's timing a bit. Yeah, a little bit of a pause to get in Jake's timing as you said. And then quick. Yeah. Two and two count. Here to Jake Hanley. Shakes off the first pitch. And he gets Hanley swinging. So Burdine holds the Comet scoreless in the sixth inning. And one inning of action to go. The Knights need four to keep it going and five to take the lead. We'll be back with you for the final inning here on Mason Sports Radio. Andrew Visconti in for his second appearance of the year. 
and the Louisville commit has been battling with a thumb injury on his throwing hand all year long, but uh, check out this these stats from this year. Two innings pitched, five strikeouts, so it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, his view might be a little bit down today because of the just trying to get back into the groove of things, but yeah, as you saw, the strikeout stuff is still there. Oh, one count as he delivers to Burdine. Catches him swinging. Yeah, nasty right there. It's real tough when you're facing Viscani throwing like 87-ish and that two seam going away from your bat. It's really tough to get nice contact on it. Burdine calls time. Again. This will be the final inning. Tonight, has got to get the bats moving if they want to stay in this one. Yeah, they are, they are in slam range. Just haven't seen the bats, and the defense has been a struggle for the Knights today. And he gets them looking, pins it on the inside corner. He had nasty from Visco right there. As what day it's been from this Comets pitching staff. Bryce Brannon around a couple of walks. Had a really good day today. Eric was very good on his birthday. And then finished it off. Andrew Visconti. That made me flinch a little bit as he <laughs> fouls that one back. That was right at us right there. Just get up in my chair. One one count for Clever. The left fielder. He's made some good plays defensively tonight. Yeah, he's had a good day. Had that hit in right field in the first. Out the night's going. Nothing else besides that. But he's had a nice day, as you said. One count after the high pitch. This guy, he's got to try to find the zone here. Again, just a load of commitments in the Comets bullpen. Visconti going to the ACC to Louisville, only a junior, so still got a few years left as that one hit into the right center gap. But Brad Hart with a running effort to retire the second Kings runner in one. More will seal the victory for the Comets in the Trinity Baseball Classic. Yeah, that ball was smoked right there. From the Knights. But one more here, as you said. Cap off. A pretty nice day for the Comets. They finally got their hitting going. With Ten hits on six runs. Had that lone air. And I think for the Knights, it was just um, the lack of defense today for them. The airs got to them, and the, the walks a little bit haunted them against a really good Mason team. you got to play defense. you got to limit the walks. Yeah, and just had a hard time catching up to the velocity of Brandon, and then it was a great adjustment by Coach Blyput and Schmulwitz in the sixth. Yeah. Got the Knights with his curveball, and now Visconti back to close things off as he gets Baker in three strikes. That will do it here from the beautiful Prasco Park. It was a great evening for baseball in the Comets. Take down the Knights 6-2. to two. Yeah, I'll bring the Knights to 8-3 and three and the Comets to 11-1. Another, like we said, a great game from the Comets. And for the Knights, it'll be their second loss in a row. And they'll try to bounce back in the next one that they have. That'll do it for this Saturday 
evening edition of Mason Baseball. We'll be back with you next Saturday here at Prasco Park again for Mason versus Muller in what is the most anticipated matchup of the season. The two top teams in the state, one and two, the Comets and Muller. And that could play huge implications in the playoff seeding, uh, but it would also just be a huge boost of confidence for the Comets if they're able to pull a win away. And that'll do it from Prasco Park tonight. I've been Adam Little, joined alongside Isaac Vargo. Big shout out to our crew tonight. We had a big crew, Daniel Panetti directing, and Lydia Lisco and Trevor Rose behind the camera. Comets are able to easily handle the Kings Knights 6-2 here.